I volunteer to go talk to prisoners. Wonderful. To, try to bring them to Jesus Christ. Wonderful. And a pastor on a TV one time was saying that if you give me this particular prisoner, this particular prisoner, I'll do this to them. This one should be killed. This one should be whipped. And I'm listening to it, and then finally it was, he was taken off the air. And yet that message was put out, and a lot of prisoners were looking at that like, whoa, what was that about? And I thought that when Jesus said that he came, why were we as sinners? He died for us, and we are declared not guilty. And as far as the east and from the west and the highest mountain, our sins are no more. And I tried to instill this in those prisoners that no matter what you did, Jesus said, I died for that. Amen. And I'm willing to give you another chance. Amen. And I wish the other pastors, and I'm not, I'm not a pastor, I'm just a, a layman, as you say. And uh, that they should be turned around and preaching the same thing instead of pushing out hatred in between what they're teaching. No, I, I think I think you got to I think you did good. I think you have to tell, you know, I think we have to tell the truth. I think for a lot of many, many millennia, uh, you know, the church has not been honest. Certainly, if you look at the early years of the Catholic Church, burning people at the stake because they were trying to get the Bible into the hands of the people in a language they understood, like Haas and some of these other people, there's no excuse for the stuff that, that has been done sometimes in the name of Jesus. But when we, when we realize that, you know, it uh, doesn't matter what we've done, we've been forgiven. Yeah, there's consequences in societies and governments that we have around the world, people incarcerated. I remember uh, one of um, one time a, a guy went to speak and he says, you know, the difference between you speaking of all the people in the prison and me, he says, you got caught. We've all sinned, come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous. No, not one. And I believe, Roberto, when we reach out to people where they're at, let them know that they can have a great eternity, just as Jesus offered that to the thief on the cross. I believe that this is the hope that lies within us, which is Jesus Christ. Your thoughts? Yeah, Roberto, I was saved in juvenile detention center. I was 16 years old. I was in a lot of trouble, very troubled uh, kid. And uh, I had never heard the gospel in my life. And I had done some bad things. I would broken my parents' hearts. I, you know, I had no high school. I was, I was just uh, headed nowhere fast and uh, really rushing headlong into hell. And I heard the gospel for the first time in juvenile home the third night that I was there. And when I heard it, I just knew uh, that God was talking to me and that if I gave my heart to Christ, he would forgive me. And that was when I was 16. And when I did that, it began to change my entire life. I remember going back to my cell that night, just feeling like I was floating on top of the world. This burden that had been on me was lifted the weight of sin was lifted and guilt was lifted. I asked the guard to leave my light on in my cell so I could read the little New Testament, the good news for modern man that this uh, preacher had given to me. And for the very first time in my life, I read about what Jesus did, what he taught, and I gave my heart to him that night. I gave my life to him that night. And I prayed this prayer, Lord, if there's anything you can do with the mess I've made, of my life, I give my life to you. Well, I became a pastor. I've been a pastor my entire life. I got all kinds of college, uh, bachelor's, master's, doctorate. I made up for lost time. But the main thing is, because I heard that gospel of hope and that gospel of forgiveness, my entire life was changed. So, Noberto, just... Uh, tell them the truth. It doesn't matter. Listen, I heard that Jeffrey Dahmer got saved. You know, that's what I heard. And I do know that, um, for instance, Pastor Jim Simbola, Brooklyn Tabernacle Church in New York, uh, was able to witness to a serial killer and lead him to Christ. And so always share that gospel. It's the message of hope. It's the only message of hope. Hope that helps, Roberto.